Hello, Hiroshi Matsuyama, Naruto Mate Developers, and the rest of CC2. Your friends at 2D Ninjas are sending you this video to show you a project that was realized a few years ago that we thought you would be interested in seeing. This project is called Naruto Mate Excel 3 Gaiden, or NA3G for short. It is a version of Excel 3 that has modified code to change the mechanics of the game to be more competitive and to work better in a one verse one setting. 2G Ninja's project lead, Rockman, learned the MIPS coding architecture and vowed to fix the balancing problems that plagued the game. After six months of work, the game was finally finished. Here's what was changed and why. The first thing we set out to change was the dash system. While having a manual dash as well as the ninja dash was a nice change of pace from the original 2D Naruto games, it came with a new set of problems. The dash was fully invincible, but more importantly, it allowed you to move freely through your opponent. This created a big problem in one-on-one -on -one matches. In the original 2D Naruto Mint series, because of the way the game is programmed, when you're being hit with a combo, you can only do two things. You can either use the KNJ to escape the combo, or you can attempt to throw Shuriken. Most of the time, Shuriken would fail because you would be stopped by the next attack in the combo screen, though some characters could actually get one through on another character. But in Excel 3, you can also dash while being hit with a combo screen, and that leads to some unfortunate side effects. As you can see, most characters' moves are made useless by this aspect. A few characters are unplayable because of it. Attempting to use the shuriken cancel to possibly stop it from happening is useless. Even a CPU opponent knows to do it when they're in trouble. Furthermore, it makes trapping an opponent almost impossible, as they can simply dash through your attacks and run away much too easily. A game where a good amount of roster can't even use their normal attack strings isn't much fun at all. So, in 3G, the dash system has been changed so that it can still function as a new mechanic, yet not disrupt the gameplay. In 3G, the dash can be performed freely to move about the stage, just like in XL3. The difference is that dash becomes disabled while you or your opponent are being hit with an attack string. As you can see, all the characters who were plagued with this problem in XL3 are now able to use their arsenal to their full extent. This alone opens up the gameplay choices on the roster as more characters now have a chance of winning. The dash has also been modified so that you can no longer dash past an opponent. This was done so that the characters who are a bit slower can actually have a chance at trapping faster characters without having to worry about them just escaping with the dash once they go to attack. The dash retains its invincible properties, and you can still dash to escape things, like shurikens and other items. The counter system was also a new feature that was added to this game, and while it was obviously a step in the right direction in terms of trying to innovate the system, it did not mesh well with the engine that this game ran on to begin with. The counter attack, or alpha counter as we 2D ninjas call it, allows you to counter any block normal attack with a punch that will send your opponent the full length of the screen. Although it took about 25% of your awakening meter to use, it could also be used when you had no awakening meter at all. To perform it, you had to press the O button right as your opponent landed an attack on your guard. Again, this proved problematic for a number of reasons. In Excel 3, characters do not have grabs. To remedy this, a block limit or guard meter was added to the game. After a certain amount of hits, the flash on the character's guard would change a few colors and eventually break. While this is actually a great system to pressure a chakra conscious opponent into using his KNJ or trying to force an escape, the alpha counter negates all of this. So you have the guard break attack, but unless your opponent is tricked, the attack is much too slow to be a viable option. 
Anytime a blocking player is hit, he can simply use the alpha counter to blast the opponent away from him. From there he can mold chakra, go into the dummy to search for an item, or pursue the attack. Some of the other characters who have rapid hit attacks have it even worse. Since the attacks hit so many times, you don't even have to time the O button press while blocking to use the alpha counter. You can simply press O at almost any time, and it will happen. While I personally wish there was a way to save this new mechanic, in the end I opted to remove it completely. The benefits far outweigh the negative and add another facet to gameplay. Now blocking players have to take notice of an opponent's shuriken cancel timing and choose the precise moment to X dash and turn the tide. Also learning how many hits it takes for your character to effectively break an opponent's guard becomes something new to take into account. The guard meter becomes relevant again, and the missing throw attack doesn't even hurt the gameplay. The awakening system has also changed in this game. The awakened state can now only be entered when the awakening god is full. The idea itself isn't bad, but the problem is in the way the awakened state is handled. The Awakening has a zero frame activation and gives the user full chakra, which would actually be okay if the meter couldn't be filled multiple times in one match. A player could carelessly waste his chakra or abuse a jutsu until his chakra was gone and then simply activate Awakening to get it all back, and if time right, do the same thing again. This made the metagame of attacking an opponent's chakra, as well as his health, a useless practice. In short, it stripped away another layer of gameplay that made these games as addictive and fun as they once were. Sure, you can activate Awakening more than one time in the other 2D games, but none of them gave you full chakra as well as an offensive and defensive advantage. And the one that was, Kakashi's Awakening in Naruto Met XL1, was properly changed in XL2. To even the playing field between all players, the Awakening system has been tweaked so that each player starts the match with a full Awakening meter. Furthermore, the Awakening can only be activated one time during the match. Afterward, the meter no longer refills. The fact that both players only have one chance at an Awakening during the match gives each battle a more strategic style. Since the Awakenings activate at zero frames, you can use them to break combos when there is an opening in the attack pattern. It can also be used to set up a complete reversal of the match if used correctly. Think of it like the X Factor system in Capcom's Marvel vs. Capcom 3. A very powerful weapon that must be used at the right time if you hope to win the match. Whether you choose to use your awakening at the beginning of the match to throw an opponent off, or wait a bit later to use it when you're in a pinch, the new awakening system definitely makes the game more interesting. Carrying over from the Storm series, each character was given a special item that was unique to them. Some of the items were great and added a nice boost to the character's playstyles. Others were, well, a bit unfair. Amongst the four biggest offenders are Konkuro, Orochimaru, Sasori, both versions, and Jiraiya. Konkuro, Sasori, and Orochimaru all have poisonous projectiles as their item. The biggest problem with these items is that they do poison damage even when blocked, and they do not take enough chakra away from the person using them. A match could theoretically be played entirely by someone where all they do is throw poison items at you, then use the dash and alpha counter to effectively escape and mold chakra so that they could repeat the same process all over again. And even if you did get them off guard, they could always use awakening to get it all right back. A few characters also have poisonous shurikens as their default shurikens in awakened state.
Jiraiya's special item was the chakra seal. I don't think it takes much explanation to explain why this item would be unfair. The fact that he could disable your ability to KNJ whatever he hit you with an item is completely self-explanatory. He could also hit you with it while you were on the floor and when you were blocking. In the interest of fairness, I changed these characters' items to something that would mesh well with their playstyle and set them apart from each other. I gave Konkuro to Fuma Shuriken. Because of the way the Fuma hits opponents in this game, it works well to augment his playstyle as it pushes opponents away. He also has a few other tricks he can do with it. Sasori, both puppet and normal version, were given regular burst shuriken to replace their poison shuriken. Sasori is already a really strong character, so losing poison shuriken doesn't hurt him in the least. Orochimaru got a defense down sale to replace his poisonous snakes. Because his attacks already do a decent amount of damage, a defense down makes him the powerful sand than he should be. Check out how much damage his Jusu does after one defense down. Aero Sunnen was given an explosive kunai. Because of the way the kunai works in Excel 3, it makes for a great special item, as it is blockable and does not hurt Jiraiya if he is too close. He has quite a few interesting setups with it as well. All the characters who have poison shurikens as their regular shuriken while in the waking state now have a special slow down shuriken. It fires in three different directions and slows down your opponent on impact, much like normal shuriken slow down tag. Couple that with strength, speed, and ability to break guard much easier that comes with awakening and you have a weapon that isn't as overpowered as poisonous shuriken, but still gets the job done. All in all, these changes have made the game more enjoyable in the one-on-one -on -one setting. You understand that this game was made with the four-player feature in mind, but it shouldn't suffer when there are only two people available to play. 2D Naruto Met has always provided a simple but deep experience, and I felt that it was missing in Naruto Met Excel 3. After the modifications, we have played this game in tournaments, and it has gone very well. With the dash, alpha counter, awakening, and items fixed, this is as close to a newer competitive 2D game as we hardcore fans are going to get. This mod doesn't fix the game completely as some bugs still exist. Characters sometimes ninja dash through their target, and in the corner some aerials don't quite connect properly. But this is the last 2D game that we fans have, and so we've done our best to keep it alive. I sincerely hope that you do not take offense to me rewriting your code or making corrections on what you may have thought was perfectly fine. And if it did offend you, I'm very sorry. But our situation is a dire one. With Storm clearly being the direction that your company was going to go in, we had no other way to enjoy a new game or play against our friends from around the world in a game that we love so dearly. Because Excel 3 was released on the PSP, we were actually able to use the PSN app Ad Hoc Party and actually play matches against each other online. At the end of this all, we just want you to see that us 2D fans are so passionate that rather than just give up on the series totally, one of us spent months learning a coding language just to turn the final 2D game into something that we could all enjoy. We love your 2D games that much. We do what we did because we are passionate and we hope you can take our passion into account when it comes to deciding the fate of 2D Naruto Man in the future. Thank you. From Rockman and the 2D Ninjas.